Previous videos in this series set up a product attribute and variation type for a hat product. In this video, we'll set up a product type. A product type holds general information for a product that all of the variations have in common, such as title, description, etc. I'll start by navigating to Commerce, Configuration, Product Types. Here we see a list of all of the current product types already created. Let's create a new one. I'll start by adding a label for our product type. Content creators will see this label when choosing what type of products to add. Next, an optional description can be added to help content creators identify this product type from the others. Then, I'll choose the product variation type that will be associated with this product. Finally, review the additional checked options. Most of the time you'll want to leave them checked, but there may be instances where you would not. Save the product type. There, our new hat product type has been saved. Like in the other videos, I want to now set up some additional fields. I'll go back and edit it. Like before, I'll first go to the Manage Fields tab. This site uses the default body field as a long description area. I'm going to edit the field label so that it's clear to site content creators. You can see here, all I need to do is update the label text and save the changes. There, the body field label has changed. I'll start adding more fields. On this page, I start by choosing what type of field to use. As you can see, there are a lot of options. However, since I already have similar product types created, I'll save a bit of time by reusing existing fields. I'll start with a plain text field already set up for a short description. I'll leave the label as is and continue on. Now for some basic settings. I always like to add some help text to assist content creators. That's all I need here, so I'll save. Done. Let's add another. I'll reuse an entity reference field for brand. This will let me categorize my product brand using a taxonomy vocabulary already set up for this. Again, I'll start by adding some useful help text for the content creators. Then, I'll choose the brand vocabulary as the taxonomy to use. I can now save. Done. Now add another. I'll keep going with another entity reference field, this time for categories. Categories is the main taxonomy vocabulary that this store uses for product groupings. I want to make sure that my content creators choose at least one category from this vocabulary, so I need to set it as a required field. Then, I can choose the vocabulary to use and save. We're on a roll now. Let's keep going. Let's see. We still have a number of existing fields that haven't been used yet for this product type. I'll switch it up and add a product reviews comments field type next. The comments field type adds the ability for site visitors to comment on our products. There isn't really much I need to do here, but I'll quickly review the field settings, lower the number of comments per page, maybe disable comment previews, and move on. Comments added. Let's add another. Again, I'll reuse an existing field, this time an entity reference for recommended products.
As before, I'll quickly add in some help text and set the reference type. This time, because the field has already been set up to reference other products, not taxonomy, I'll have to select what type of products can be added as a related product. I could check all of the boxes, however, for this demonstration, I'll just check some of them. I'll then save and add yet another field. We're adding a lot of fields to this product. You'll probably find that this is one of the more tedious tasks when setting up a store. Luckily, once it's done, it's done. This bit of tediousness also really shows how adaptive Drupal Commerce is. It truly lets you customize your store and products however you need it to. This specifications field is a text field similar to the long and short descriptions added earlier. This is just another custom field we've included in the Commerce demo site that is where content creators could optionally place a list of product specs. All right, we have one more field to add and then we can move on. When adding the brand and category entity references earlier, I missed adding another categorization field for grouping a product as being featured or on clearance. I'll add this one in now. As I customize this entity reference field, I'll explain a bit about what this means. Nearly any type of content, whether it's a vocabulary list, a product, a blog, etc., can be referenced through this type of field. So when you're adding content, you have the ability to also pull in content directly from a different source. This outside content can then be used and manipulated within the new content you are adding. It can be simple, like adding a brand, or complex, like pulling in reviews or related products into the page. All right, that's enough fields. We can now manage the displays for these fields. I'll go to the Manage Form Display tab first. Like I mentioned in previous videos, this is where we configure the form that content creators and administrators will see when editing product of this product type. The first thing I like to do here is order the fields in a way that would make sense to whoever is adding new products to the store. I'll do this now simply by dragging and dropping the fields in order. At the bottom of this page there, dis there is a disabled section. Any field placed here would be disabled from the form. I've moved publish out of there because I want this to be an option that administrators will be able to use. Bear with me while I finish moving things around. The next thing I like to do is review the widget for each field. Fields can be used in different ways, and the widget dropdown lets you select this for each field. Most of these can be left as default, but I'll change a few of them. I want the categorization field to be displayed on the page in a list. This makes it easier to see what is available. By switching the widget from autocomplete to select list, I can achieve this outcome. I'll do this for categories, brands, and special categories. I don't need the content author for this content, so I'll move it into disabled. I missed it earlier. Okay, the rest looks good to me. Next, I can change some of the widget properties by clicking the gear icon beside the widget. If you're still quite new to Drupal Commerce and you're the only one setting this up, it's always a good practice to check out the options that are available for each widget. If you make any changes, you need to use the update button to save them or cancel to discard them. I think I'll turn off override labels and update the widget. 
The rest of the widgets I'll leave as is and save these changes. We're getting close now. The last step to setting up a new product type, like in the other videos, is to manage the front end display via the Manage Display tab. Previously, we were setting up the way administrators will see the product in the website back end. Now, we're going to manage how customers will see the product on the website front end. It's important to note that these settings can potentially be overridden through a product page theme file, view, etc. However, if your site doesn't do this, then these settings will control the output. Like in other displays, I'll set whether labels are being shown, update the ordering of the fields on the page, and also configure the widgets as needed. For configuring the widgets, I'm going to first turn off links to the various vocabulary taxonomy pages. Linking to those pages doesn't really benefit the user in this website, so turning off that link is a good thing. I'll also set the recommended products to be rendered entities. Within the widget properties, I'll set view mode as teaser. This will make the recommended products appear on the page similar to how they appear in the site catalog. Since we're working on a product type now, I'll set up a teaser view mode for it. I'll scroll down to custom display settings, check the teaser display mode, and save. A new teaser view mode link, along with the default that we were working on, appears at the top of the page. I'll click teaser to go to it. I'll now configure this view mode in a similar way to the default, although we won't need as many fields active. While I'm setting this up, I'll explain why we have multiple view modes now. Basically, every type of content has one default view mode like we saw previously but we can optionally add more view modes for different purposes. Products normally have at least two view modes, a default view mode, which is the full product page, and a teaser view mode, which is a condensed view used for catalogs, recommended products, etc. The teaser view mode really only needs an image, the title, maybe a brand, etc. It's quite minimal. By setting a teaser, we get only the information we need for whenever it's suitable to show this condensed view. I'll keep setting this up, then save it to complete this demo. Our new product type is pretty much done and ready to use. In the final video of this series, I'll show the end result and we'll finally add in the hat product that I showed you in the first video.